In our previous videos, we've discussed DC motors, and we've talked about how a current traveling through a magnetic field will experience a force. And we took this idea and used it to explain the principle of how DC motors operate. In this video, we're going to talk about DC generators. And we can think of DC generators as being like the opposite of DC motors. In fact, DC generators and DC motors share a lot of common characteristics. They have the same kind of construction. But whereas a DC motor used a current in a magnetic field to create motion, a DC generator uses motion in a magnetic field to create a current. But the idea is basically the same. Thinking back to our video on magnetic fields, we know first of all that there's going to be a magnetic field between the North and the South Pole here. And what we have to imagine is we move a conductor through this magnetic field. And as we do so, a voltage or an electromotive force is going to be created in that conductor. In this case, moving a conductor downwards through this field is going to create a current that moves towards us. So I'll represent that by the symbol for a current moving towards us. And that's when the conductor is traveling in a downwards direction. So I'll mark the velocity V on that, uh, on that arrow there. The size of the voltage or the electromotive force that is produced in the conductor is determined by this formula. So I've got EMF here, electromotive force, is equal to V B L. And notice that it's a small case letter V, a capital B, and a small case letter L. The V in this case stands for velocity, which is measured in meters per second. We know from our previous videos that B is the magnetic flux density, which is measured in Tesla. And L finally is the length of the conductor that passes through the magnetic field. That's measured in meters. Let's consider a quick example. And we'll say that in this case, uh, we pass a conductor through the magnetic field with a velocity of eight meters per second. The magnetic flux density B we'll say is one Tesla. And finally, the length of the conductor, we'll say is 10 centimeters. So let's have a go at working out the EMF in this case. And to do that, we simply multiply these three terms together, V, B, and L. So we have eight meters per second, multiplied by one Tesla, multiplied by 10 centimeters, which we need to express in meters. So that's 0.1 meters. And uh, that's gonna give me an answer of 0.8 volts. So we have three key parameters in a DC generator. We have the current that's produced by the electromotive force. We have the magnetic flux density of the magnetic field. And we have the velocity that the conductor travels at. One important thing to note is that the direction of these three parameters are all linked in a way that they're all perpendicular to one another. And what I mean by that is if we imagine a, a 2D surface like the one I've sketched here, say a tabletop or something like that, we can say that if the magnetic field travels away from us across that tabletop, so I'll mark that on there as B, and the current is flowing in a direction that is to the left, say, so I'll mark that on as I, then the velocity that will actually travel in an upwards direction away from the table. And I'll mark that on as V. And for any given problem, we'll have to rotate this arrangement in order to determine uh, which direction the current is flowing or which direction the velocity needs to be, and that kind of thing. So if we imagine our example from the previous page, the velocity was in a downwards direction, if you remember, the field was not pointing away from us, it was pointing from left to right. And so the current in that case traveled towards us as a result. One useful way to remember this is by using something called the right hand rule. And if you imagine holding your right hand up in the thumbs up position, so that your thumb is pointing upwards, 
but then also extend your first finger, your index finger, to point away from you. And then with your middle finger, uh, point that to your left. And so now your thumb, your index finger, and your middle finger are all perpendicular to one another, like in the arrangement below. And in our analogy there, the thumb is telling us the direction of the velocity. Our first finger is telling us the direction of the magnetic field. And our middle finger is telling us the direction that the current is going to flow. Let's now have a look at a more applied example. And we can see here a DC series generator. And if you've watched our previous videos on DC motors, you'll notice that this is a very similar arrangement to a DC series motor. In this generator, though, we don't have a power supply. We have instead an armature which we're going to move uh, mechanically. Now, that could be by hand or it could be by using a turbine or similar to force this armature to rotate. And as it does, like we've discussed, a electromotive force is going to be produced in the armature. And that's going to uh, make a current which is going to flow around this series circuit. Here we can see a cross-sectional view of the diagram that we saw previously. So we can see, first of all, that we have a magnetic field produced by two poles, north and south. And the direction of that magnetic field is from left to right. And in the middle here, we have our armature. And this armature is rotating in a counterclockwise direction. We've previously discussed the perpendicular relationship between the magnetic field, the velocity of the conductor, and the current produced. And what we'll see here is that the maximum current, and therefore the maximum voltage, or EMF, is produced at a point where the direction of the armature is perpendicular to the direction of the magnetic field. So in this diagram, we can imagine that when the armature rotates to this sort of position here, the velocity of each conductor is going to be perpendicular to the direction of the magnetic field. And so that's when we're going to encounter the maximum EMF produced. On the other hand, if we imagine the position rotating even further, let's say the armature is in this kind of orientation, now the velocities are both in the same direction, or the same plane of direction, as the magnetic field, and so no EMF is produced at this point. And so we get this kind of pulsing effect produced in a simple DC generator like this, because maximum voltage is produced at one half of the rotation, and no voltage is produced in the other half of the rotation. The solution for this is to simply have more armature conductors, which kind of even out this response. Nevertheless, let's focus on our simple example here, and we'll calculate the EMF produced in the perpendicular position, so this red position here where the EMF or the voltage is going to be at a maximum. We can calculate this with a very simple formula. And the formula looks like this. For the maximum EMF, uh, we have a formula BLV. And we've got on the right-hand side here that B represents the magnetic flux density, which is measured in Tesla. L is the length of the conductor, which is measured in meters. And V is the velocity of the conductor, which is in meters per second. Now, we essentially have two conductors in this arrangement. And we can imagine, because this is a cross-section, we have to imagine these kind of traveling into the page. But we have two conductors there. And we're going to get uh, EMF, or voltage, produced in each of these conductors. So let's apply this formula in just a second. But first of all, we need to be given a bit more information. So let's say, first of all, that the magnetic flux density, B in this case, is 120 millitesla. Let's also say that 
this um, this armature is rotating at a speed of 90 radians per second. And because we're measuring in radians per second, this is something called an angular velocity. And we usually give it the, the letter omega, which is sort of a, a W-like Greek figure. So now that we know the rotational speed, the angular velocity, and the magnetic flux density, we also need to know two more things. First of all, the length of the conductor. And let's say that in this case, the length of the conductor is 200 millimeters. So we can imagine this, this conductor here uh, traveling into the page 200 millimeters deep. The last thing that we need to know is the diameter of the armature. So the distance um, from, from one conductor to the other, this diameter here. And we'll say that that diameter, D, is equal to 100 millimeters. So now that we're given this information, let's apply this to calculate the maximum EMF. Well, first of all, we run into a problem because we see here for our maximum EMF, we need to know V, the velocity, and the velocity is measured in meters per second. Now, we've been given an angular velocity measured in radians per second. So we need to convert that into meters per second. Fortunately, we can do that quite easily. And we can use the formula V equals R times omega. So we know omega. R, in this case, is the radius. We're not given the radius. We're given the diameter, uh, 100 millimeters. So the radius being half the diameter, 50 millimeters. So let's go ahead and calculate the velocity of these armature conductors. We can say that R is 50, but it's in millimeters, so I need to say 50 times 10 to the minus 3, multiplied by omega, which in this case is 90. And if I calculate that, I get an answer of 4.5 meters per second. And so now that we know the velocity in meters per second, we can go ahead and calculate the maximum EMF. And we've said that the EMF is the magnetic flux density multiplied by the length of the conductor multiplied by the velocity. And so we can go ahead and say that the EMF in this case is going to be the magnetic flux density, 120 millitesla, or 120 times 10 to the minus 3. multiplied by L, the length of the conductor, which we said is 200 millimeters, or 200 times 10 to the minus 3. Finally, multiplied by V, the velocity in meters per second, which we've calculated to be 4.5. And if we put all that together, we come up with an answer of 0 0.108 volts. And so in this case, we'll get a, a voltage of 0 0.108 produced in each of the armature conductors when they pass that perpendicular point. So I hope you found this video useful, first of all on the basic construction of a DC generator, and then secondly, to calculate the EMF produced in an armature when it's rotating at a certain speed within a DC generator.